Hello and welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Tomáš Fuk, sometimes called Delťák, and this will be another talk from the table. This time we will take another look into automotive, respectively electromotive. I have to say that I've become uh, really addicted into the electric drive, as you probably picked up from the video up over here. Every time I drove uh, some of our fossils that we still have at home, I think almost whole time how unpleasant it is. And every time after that, I switch back into our Tesla. The first 10 or 15 kilometers is just absolute blast. I just love it and enjoy it so much. So yeah, I'm addicted. But today it will be about completely different car that I had the opportunity to drive even actually before uh, we have our Tesla. Uh, it was during the time that uh, we have uh, order in place, but we didn't, didn't uh, get it yet. And specifically the car was Ford Mustang Mach-E all-wheel drive long range. I know, I know. Currently, it's cool and trendy to talk about the new GT version, but for me, even the old all-wheel drive version was uh, something new. However, this was not a long experience, no long test. It was for just about two hours drive, maybe something under, main, mainly in the city and uh, over, over on the highway. No country roads, no really tight uh, turns. So I certainly missed a lot of things, but this is my two cents or short information about it. To start, uh, we should go through some hard data. WTLP or EPA for my English friends is uh, 550 kilometers. Battery capacity is 91 kilowatts hour. Fastest charging is 150 kilowatts. Weight is 2.2 tons and power is 351 horsepower. Zero to 60, 5.1 seconds. It's an SUV in the most digestible variant for me, Coupe. Overall, I think it's probably the best looking Ford right now and one of the uh, best looking SUVs on the market. I believe that it's primarily due to low seating position, something that it actually has common with our Tesla Model, model Y, uh, which also sits low. But the Mustang actually sits only 14.5 centimeters above ground. Anyway, appearance is subjective. But, but before we talk about the interior, I would like to highlight door handles. I'm fine with the possibility that you don't need turnkey, just key in the pocket. I'm fine with application in your pocket to open the car. But entering a code on the screen on the B, B pillar, that's something like spaceship for me, my friends. It's crazy. But after we get inside, the first thing I noticed is actually the floor that's sloping away from the seat down and to the, to the pedals. And I have to say that I did not get used to it for the whole two hours. I still was thinking it's like you don't have the pedals in, uh, or you don't have the legs in front of you. You have them like under you. It's, it's. I don't really know how to how to say it, but it was something different and something weird to me. That different. That definitely would need uh, some time to get used to from from my side. But what, on the other hand, impressed me was just how nice and comfortable the, the seats was. It was really nice to just recline in the front seats and it, it was great. At the same time, the uh, leg space on, on the back was uh, relatively, relatively good. It was actually generous, but the bench was actually really hard. I don't think that I would be able to sit there for the whole trip to Croatia. 
in front of the driver there are actually two displays uh, one functional as a digital speedometer and the other as a central front uh, infotainment with uh, actually now Ford typical wheel or Ford uh, signature wheel. Otherwise the interior seemed uh, elegant to me and I think uh, it's pleasant enough that uh, I can imagine spending a significant time in it. And just before you settle off, you just take your eyes uh, up, look outside and realize, uh, realize, <coughs> and realize how good the view from the car actually is. And during those first few meters that you are actually getting out of the spot and uh, before you join the traffic, uh, you re realize actually how good understanding you have about where your car is. It actually has good uh, response via, via the steering wheel and via the seats. And it's actually really nice. So you understand what's happening with the wheels, with the, with the car, where, where you are. Perfect. After you settle off, this feeling will not disappear. You are actually still feeling in the control and the cars follow the steering wheel really well. Really nicely, clearly, understandably. In the turns, actually, uh, there is a zero body roll, which actually surprised me because of the weight. Uh, but it, it's probably thanks to the thinner or tougher suspension settings. Uh, but you don't really realize that the suspension is actually quite stiff because tires are actually really large and have uh, nice balloons for today's standard. So the car on one hand is uh, re really comfortable, really nice, really clears the way for you. And on the other hand, since it's stiff, firm, uh, it turns really nice. So it's perfect balance. I really like that. It was really enjoyable. Oh, and also when you get to the highway, you are just overwhelmed with the endless, endless acceleration that feel like the acceleration will never end. But unfortunately, it ends at 180 kilometers per hour. And actually it feels like you just hit a wall because the car actually disconnects or stops sending uh, electricity to the motors. So you actually fell down to about 170 or something like that. So that's not really the best thing, but I guess it's fine. So it's clear that Ford Mustang Mach-E will not go as fast as you will go right now to click the subscribe button so you wouldn't miss anything. Anyway, when you are sitting in the car at the limiter at 180 kilometers per hour, you realize how quiet it is. Actually, there is silence. You can whisper at that speed. It's something that uh, we, owners of Tesla, can just envy and have a tears in our eyes. That's really good job on Ford part for uh, soundproofing the car. It's really good. The car is also very calm at that speed because probably it's weight and it still follows the wheel really, really well. So right now it's a good time to start thinking about slowing down. The recuperation actually uh, comes into play and I would say that it's on similar level as uh, our Tesla, maybe a little bit weaker. It's really hard to say from only those two hours and it could be about the same, but the car is just a little bit heavier, so it feels like weaker, but um, yeah, hard to say. What's actually delightful is that you are able to drive it with just one pedal. The uh, Mustang is able to completely stop the car with just uh, recuperation, uh, unlike some European relatives. So you don't really need to need to break those last few kilometers that you are moving. Anyway, when we are stopped, uh, it's necessary to look at the consumption and talk about the re real life range. According to WTP or EPA, it's about 550 kilometers, which with the 91 kilowatt hour battery 
would mean that <clears throat> Ford estimated consumption should be around 16.5 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. I must admit that at the time I wasn't uh, really a fully fledged um, electric vehicle driver, so I probably wasn't best with the consumption. And also uh, we was trying the top speed and stuff like that. That's usually not that good with the, with the consumption. But on the other hand, it was August. It was relatively warm, around 22, I believe, and degrees Celsius. Uh, it was dry. It didn't rain for days, so hard to say, but my consumption for those two hours was actually 25 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers, which would mean that if we uh, calculate that with, for the full battery, that would mean a 364 kilometers range, which is nice. That's real range and not really bad, it's good range, but uh, let's be honest, it's thanks to the battery. It's thanks to the large battery, but the effectivity and consumption wasn't that, wasn't that good. Anyway, since we are already stopped, uh, we could take our stuff from the trunk, right? <laughs> uh, I think the trunk is actually decent. It's decently sized for SUV Coupé. And of course, there is a frank. Uh, I would compare that to our uh, Tesla Model Y. Uh, usually, there are just some cables. And you are tra traveling for longer trips, you could um, put there two, maybe three backpacks. So, yeah. I must admit that I actually really like the Ford Mustang Mach-E. It was actually in our short list, and we was really thinking about it. But ultimately, we went for Tesla. But yeah, I like it a lot. What about you? Let me know down in the comments. And since you are over there, you could click the like button and maybe subscribe and the bell. Anyway, take care and see you next week. Bye.